Hey Grand Adventurers, welcome back. I'm your host Mark Guido and we are on the gorgeous Sonoma County coast of Northern California camped right atop the ocean bluffs with the pounding surf below. We hope that you'll come along on this episode as we explore this entire stretch of coastline all the way from Bodega Bay north to the Mendocino County line. So stay tuned. In this week's Grand Adventure, we'll bring you camping, hiking, and even visiting an historical Russian fort, all along the Sonoma County coast of Northern California. But first, we'll make a quick stop in the agricultural town of Dixon. We broke up our trip from last week's stop in Topaz Lake, Nevada, into two days, with a quick overnight in Dixon, located along I-80, about midway between Sacramento and San Francisco. It's a charming small town right in the heart of California's produce farming. We got caught up on laundry and were able to dump and fill our tanks while staying at the attractive Dixon May Fairgrounds. Here they have approximately 15 full hookup sites available on a first come, first served basis for $45 per night, a very reasonable price by California standards. The fairgrounds makes a great stopover when traveling through the area. But our destination for this week was not the fairgrounds. It was Ocean Cove Store and Campground, along the Pacific Coast Highway in Sonoma County, north of Jenner. This is dry camping for $40 per night cash or $45 per night if paying by credit card. Again, relatively cheap by California standards, especially for a spectacular location like this. Ocean Cove isn't set up like your typical campground. Instead of conventional sites with driveways, the proprietors have simply placed over 100 picnic tables and fire rings at various spots throughout the property, and each one constitutes a campsite. All spots are first come, first served. We figured that by arriving on the afternoon of Memorial Day Monday, we'd have a good chance of getting a spot overlooking the water. And boy, were we right. It's going to be tough to beat this campsite this season.
Many of the sites at Ocean Cove are out in the open, ensuring great Starlink signal. But if you prefer, there's one campground loop that's tucked back in the trees for more shelter. Ocean Cove also features group sites, a fish cleaning station, and a short, steep boat ramp to the Pacific Ocean below. There's also a small restaurant and bar across the street. This serves a killer beer-battered cod fish and chips that's reasonably priced, and a very tasty clam chowder. Ocean Cove was first surveyed in 1860 by J.C. Conway, under instructions from the United States Surveyor General. Fred and Anna Liebig, the first recorded owners, established a small store here that same year. Timber was harvested from the surrounding forest, then loaded from the bluffs onto dog hole schooners, before being sent down the coast to San Francisco. The Columbia Movie Studio purchased the property in the early 1930s to make a movie, Frenchman's Cove. They built six cabins in the back of the store to serve as living quarters. After the movie was completed, they sold the property. We've spent each night this week being lulled to sleep by the sound of the waves crashing on the rocks beneath our campsite. While Ocean Cove can accommodate any size rig, the same can't be said for the two-lane Pacific Coast Highway, also known as California Route 1. With blind 15 mile per hour curves, zero shoulder in many places, huge drop-offs to the ocean below, numerous single lane construction zones and many oncoming drivers who preferred our side of the double yellow line, this is the last place to learn how to tow a large trailer. The 27 mile drive from Bodega Bay was white knuckle all the way. There are no good alternatives to Route 1 either. Higher in the coastal mountains, the roads are even narrower and ridiculously steep too. When we come back following a quick ad break, we're going to share the gorgeous coastal scenery all throughout this area, 
including some hiking right from our campground and a visit to an unexpected Russian encampment right along the California coast. So stay tuned. This week's Grand Adventure is going to be long on scenery and largely short on chatter. With this kind of natural beauty throughout this rural stretch of Pacific Ocean coastline, it's best to let our cameras do much of the talking. The nearest community to our campground is Jenner, a 35 minute drive to the southeast. However, there's little here besides a small inn and gas station with exorbitant prices. Jenner is where the famed Russian River empties into the Pacific, following its 115 mile journey through the wine country of Mendocino and Sonoma counties. Most of the Sonoma County coastline consists of steep, rocky bluffs looking down upon the water, dotted by numerous sea stacks that have resulted from the collision between tectonic plates along the San Andreas Fault, which runs parallel to and just offshore of this stretch of Pacific coast. Just south of Jenner, however, lie the sandy beaches of Goat Rock State Beach, part of Sonoma Coast State Park. Goat Rock State Beach is split into two sections by the Isthmus of Goat Rock itself. To the north is a broad sandy crescent shaped beach leading right up to the mouth of the Russian River. Dogs are not permitted here. South of Goat Rock is the popular dog friendly blind beach of the state park. With a population barely exceeding 900 residents, 
Bodega Bay provides a rare protected harbor along the Sonoma coast. The town is named in honor of a Spanish naval officer who explored the west coast of North America as far north as Alaska during multiple voyages in the late 18th century. It was here that Alfred Hitchcock shot his famed film, The Birds. There are numerous RV campgrounds in Bodega Bay operated by Sonoma County as part of Duran Regional Park. This is one of them, the jetty campground that's surrounded by water on three sides. While we'd rather be in our campsite at Ocean Cove, these campgrounds in Bodega Bay do avoid the hellacious drive along Route 1. Winds today have swung around to the northwest and have been on the increase, with gusts predicted to reach or exceed 30 miles per hour. Waves have also begun to increase as a result and are predicted to reach heights of 9 to 12 feet, producing a spectacular view right from our campsite. Zoe and I are going to go on a short hike to Stillwater Cove, part of another 210-acre Sonoma County Park of the same name that borders the Ocean Cove campground. This is a short 1.5 mile out and back route that hugs the coastline while occasionally dipping in and out of some beautiful forest. It may be short, but the convenience of a trailhead just a few hundred yards from our RV is unparalleled. This seems to be the Sonoma Coast's miniature version of the Angels Landing Trail. I'm definitely not bringing Zoe up there.
Back at camp, the wind continues to increase along with the waves and ocean swell as the National Weather Service has posted a gale warning. Following a quick ad break to pay the bills, we'll pay a visit to an unexpected Russian fortification right here on the California coast, so stay tuned. The howling northwesterly wind today continues to buffet this stretch of coastline. California is the last place I'd expect to find an historical Russian encampment, but RV travel is for us often an opportunity to learn about the unexpected. Five miles south of our campground, Fort Ross State Historic Park commemorates and preserves a fur trading outpost of the Russian American Company. Chartered by Russian Emperor Paul I in 1799 with a mission of establishing new settlements in Russian America, conducting trade with natives and scientific exploration, and carrying out an expanded colonialization program. They operated Fort Ross during the Russian California period, which extended from 1812 to 1842. The name Ross is a poetic name for Russian. A small but well-designed interpretive museum inside the visitor center leads one through a chronology of the site. The Russian American Company established outposts along North America's west coast from Alaska to California and Fort Ross was its southernmost settlement intended as an agricultural base to supply Alaska. Settlers included Russians, Native Alaskans, Californians, and Creoles, those of mixed Russian and Native ancestry. From the visitor center, we'll follow the short walk to the Ford area. The size of this eucalyptus tree is positively breathtaking. Fort Ross came with strategic advantages for the Russians. The bluffs provided a commanding view of the sea, while the coastal mountains provided some protection against an attack by land. The small cove and sandy beach provided a harbor where ships could be loaded via a chute from atop the bluffs. And it was here that California's first shipyard began operations, constructing three brigs and a schooner.
It's believed that Fort Ross was once home to 59 buildings. This was the officer's barracks. The architecture here is fascinating, all built with a sturdy construction of native redwood. The Rachev House was the home of the fort's commander and his family, and is believed to be one of the only remaining original buildings from the Russian period. The other buildings on this site are all reconstructions, begun after the state acquired the property in 1906, following years of decay. This was a warehouse built to support extensive Russian trade with Spanish and later Mexican Californians, as well as Britain, the United States, Europe, and China. This building served as headquarters for the first manager, Ivan Kuskov, as well as a storeroom for arms and other valuables. This was the first Russian Orthodox chapel to be constructed south of Alaska. The Russians withdrew from Fort Ross in 1841 and sold their improvements and stock to John Sutter. Following the Russian period, Fort Ross was a working ranch with interests in agriculture, livestock, and shipping. There are sites from this period still to be seen at Fort Ross State Park, including the Call House, built in 1878. Here, George Washington Call and his Chilean wife bought 2,500 acres, including Fort Ross in 1878 and made Fort Ross a thriving community center and shipping port for neighboring farms, ranches, and lumber mills.
So we truly hope that you've enjoyed visiting the Sonoma County coast of Northern California with us. Coming up next week, we're going to be leaving the coast for a bit to visit a gorgeous lake in Northern California. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure which we air every wednesday evening we'd be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends family and on social media understand it is extremely important to us that if you like this episode please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below and while you're down below that's where you'll find the comment section it's where we always love to hear from you each week so until next Wednesday, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.